all right this intro on my video journal is for winter preparations so the idea is to get this yard ready this is a brand new yard is mostly uh, swarm removals these three on the center uh, originated from packages but the other ones are completely removals and swarm catched uh, during this year. So the idea is to evaluate the resources to see how ready they are for winter and equalize or in other case merge hives. This is a uh, hope, a removal from um, June 5th. They're doing great. Um, I love these girls, work really hard. The one right next to it, it is the convent. That is a removal that I did on a church on July 10. That was July 10. This one is an open hive that I got exactly a week ago. Like I said, these three and the other ones on the back, I basically inherited them from uh, Eric Kruger. That a Kruger, his wife gave them to me as Eric passed away from COVID at the beginning of the year. Um, so they were by themselves for the most part of uh, seven months. This is a removal that he did and he plays on Wallace uh, between two roads and they were there without ever being visited for seven months. Uh, very aggressive, very defensive. The white one over there, um, on the corner it is also a removal but that one was from a top bar no follower board cross come a whole mess uh, they were very defensive extremely aggressive in the beginning and staying eric all the time every single day uh, the one next to it it is a swarm that i catch on the same apiary uh, very small only three to four frames uh, but all of this all of these six hives have brand new queens all of them have brand new queens from three different sources and the idea is to analyze how those queens are doing for the last month they were a requeen on september 5th trying to see if they can build up a lot for uh, this fall flow and so that is the purpose this is a brand new yard and so we're going to start uh, working on hope and the convent as i haven't checked them for the past uh, two weeks so in regards to fuel i did start with um cotton because i know cotton is a um, uh, cold cool smoke which is what you need today is the first time that i'm going to use uh, pine needles there is a bunch of um pine trees in around my house so I'm gonna start using that to save some money I do recommend um, spending some money in this to ignite the fuel uh, using those candle um, lighters it, it just takes too much time and it is a pain in the neck so um, I really recommend that I mean the pine pine needles work really quick I'm um, just, this is the first time I'm using it. I don't know how much they're gonna last. Um, I do use um, all the cotton clothes that are too damaged, too old to give to uh, donating. So I turn it to pieces, I use it as fuel. So that's a way to save some money. Well, these pine needles surely do smoke a lot. So let's see, we're gonna start uh, checking the hives today and let's see how long uh, this uh, pine needle lasts. Also talking about gloves, Jesus Christ uh, is a pain. I do have the goat skin gloves, very nice, um, but it's very stiff and you always end up hurting some bees unintentionally and that gets them mad and start you know stinging and all that stuff so i've been trying um some of the gloves i did try the nitrate gloves these are the ones that i use very nice they protect a lot i bought them at a tractor supply 
and they protect you a lot. Um, they do the work. Problem is, uh, if you're like me that sweats too much, it's going to be an issue. Um, for one, uh, you have to dry them out, so you have to turn it inside out to dry them, and otherwise, it, it, they're not going to dry on their own. The other problem that you have with this in summer is if you're working in direct sunlight, this thing is going to start burning you bad. It gets hot really quick and you feel it in your hands. Um, the skin goats are good, like I'd say, but I, I don't like how uh, the little uh, dexterity that you have with those and pushing the bees and hurting them. So today I just bought these three uh, dollar you know just mechanic gloves uh, I'm just gonna use it I'm basically gonna use all three of my gloves uh, every time one gets too sweaty I just switch it and so I'm gonna try this is the first time I'm trying this I do usually use uh, the regular nitrate gloves too the simple ones um, sometimes I don't use gloves at all but, you know, in the situation that the girls are right now, sometimes they are very defensive because of the dirt. This is a Bismarck insulated top. I also put a, an insulated reflective cover like this for extra one that I'm going to put in all, the, in all the top ones. And as you can see, the girls are not aggressive. They're very nice, very quiet. Um, still gonna work as fast as I can because I don't want uh, too much uh, I don't want to start a robin frenzy here I try to do today is just to see how much storage do they have uh, if they're getting ready for winter if they need more uh, feeding um, just trying to evaluate that all right so you see the girls are very nice, not aggressive, not defensive. Um, I don't have a queen excluder, so I'm just gonna take a quick peek. I don't think she's here. This girl is very shy, and all the bees are runners, like her mom. You see, they start to um, hide right away. So I put this right there at the entrance if they wanna get in. And I do use uh, the sweeper sheets for the high beetles. They do work. As you can see, there are always some in there. I have the traps as well. So I, I, I am very, I like to be very proactive about the high beetles because I see what they can do to a hive. And so I'm just gonna replenish those. I'm gonna exchange them. Look at that then. There's still some alive in there, so you just crush them because you don't like them. You know, I think I like. Um, it, it might sound insane, but I dislike more high beetles than I dislike uh, uh, yellow jackets. This is a trap. Now, the traps, oh man, these traps, um, I hate them and I love them. One thing is because you always have to, when you're using oil, you got to make sure to remove this before you do anything else. When you take them out or you put them in, because they will kill, uh, the oil will kill bees on contact. And the other thing that you have to remember is to put them back in, which... I always forget as you can see the girls are not jumping in sometimes when you move across the hive they jump on their hands being defensive they're being very very quiet so you see the traps they keep working now I put this second deep giving them more room to build on the on the full floor that's a possibility we are still in it. And as you can see, 
we only have one, two, one, two, three frames with bees. So this is good. I, I, I don't mind. This is very good. That is packed with bees. They're already building comb. Now the other combs are not. So those. This is uh, one of the things that uh, you know I have to evaluate coming well going into winter. What am I gonna do with this? Uh, am I going to condense them into just one deep? Uh, definitely the frame feeders gotta go. Now the frame feeders, I like frame feeders because if you use the other ones, it's a lot more equipment that you need to have, another box. And so they already drank it all. I think the last time that I gave them something was um, this Friday, today is Wednesday. This Friday is gonna be two weeks, so it's overdue. The thing that I do, because these things can become mass graves, the thing that I do to avoid any bees dying is that I use cork, okay? And I, just a little pieces of cork will work. I actually use three pieces of cork, one round and the same one uh, cover, you know, cut in half. There is absolutely no bees dead here at all, so it works. Um, and so I'm going to feed them again, but I'm going to first check because I put honeybee healthy on all the feeds and, and all the sugar one on one. And right now it's not a good idea to show it. So right now I'm just going to check on the frames on the center where the bees are. I just want to know if the queen is starting to lay on those because I'm going to count how many frames of brood, how many frames of honey I have. Now this is the beginning of October, and so they still have until the end of um, November, basically to, um, ouch, she got me right there. So when they get you and you feel it, you remove it. Using a glove is easy to remove it, and immediately smoke it. And it's smoking good because they're gonna smell that pheromone and quicker than none you're gonna have a lot more bees on top of you okay so that one just went straight for the kill so they're starting to build on this side they already have some nectar on it nothing on this side and the good thing is they started to do the same on this one right here. So I, I like when they do it in both sides because they don't uh, grow it too much on one and then the other one is pretty much not gonna have any room. Okay, this is the problem when you have too much space um, for the bees. What insect is this? Jesus Christ, it keeps, I think it's like a little wasp. It keeps tapping on my face. Let's see what that is. Right there. I want to know what that is. It looks like I have a wasp. Let me see. There it is. And the white contrast there. What are you? Okay, this thing is to keep me cool. Um, it does a good job if it stays in place, which it never does. Uh, I forgot to put a rubber band from corner to corner, which is the only solution that you have. To keep it in place every time you lean down or something it just moves but it does a, a good job of giving you some um, air uh, yeah beware of the the problem with the high beetles is too much space for them to patrol so high beetles take advantage of that They are building comb, so I do need to give them more one-to-one -one than the one that I'm giving them right now. So they don't use the nectar as fuel for the comb, because I don't want that. Okay, so this is it. One, two, three, four frames 
that they're starting to build calm on it. So 101, absolutely. Remember to remove the tape. This is the only part that I don't like about the tape. They take it out and put it back in. <laughs> but anything for the girls. So, another more thing to do. So what I do is, I put the top cover there. And I move it here. Always take a peek on the bottom. You can see a lot of what's going on. And you can also clean a little bit. This Burcom happens when you don't match the top uh, frames here with the frames on the bottom. So you start building that up. So always tries to, you know, match it. Um, don't see the queen. Don't see anything going on. So I put it there. And to prevent the honey, if this was full of honey or anything, I bring another cover and just put it there so I can work without worrying about rubbing bees coming here to smell anything or anything like that. So let's look at the girls. As you can see, there is bees on every frame, which is what we want. We want more bees on this end. So we want all the frames to be packed full of bees going to winter. So let's see what's going on. As you can see, I'm removing the Apivar treatment. And it's already the 42nd day on Apivar. So the strips are coming down. And I'm gonna start tomorrow, or probably on Monday. I don't think I'm tomorrow I'm gonna be here. But on Monday, I'm gonna start oxalic acid for all the hives. And so, that is it, always. I mean, I know some beekeepers say that they can examine a whole hive in 15 minutes. I'm not there yet. But more than that, I wanna take advantage of the girls are so um, at ease to see what really is going on in here. I wanna make sure that they have a lot of resources. Sorry, princess. Keep one of these handy in case you see the queen. You can put it in here and finish your examination, making sure that you're not gonna do anything to her. You see you see a high beetle going from frame to frame, you know, from cell to cell. Actually see two, three. And yes, I don't have any traps here on the bottom, which is my mistake. I'm gonna be correcting that right now. They'll come down, let's see how the pine needle is doing. And it's basically gone. So in less than 10, 15, 10, 15 minutes, the pine needles are gonna be exhausted. Okay, always do the smoke just to the top of the bees to get them out of the way. Don't pop inside like that. I've been trying to move it like every time that I come to put them facing that way but I was checking the wind directions on winter and it went, the winds are gonna come from that direction, so going back. <laughs> um, I'm gonna put some uh, wind breaks anyway. Okay, so second to last. Look at this beauty, honey and pollen, awesome. No eggs. All right, so I already moved those out of the way. I'm not gonna take too long on this one. I don't wanna rub in frenzy or get the girls worked up. It is one o'clock in the afternoon, so there's a lot of foragers outside. 
this is a good time to do it. Okay. All right, look at that. Okay. This is the third frame. And we have a queen cup here, which is empty, obviously. But they do it anyways. Um, I don't want any shenanigans this late in the year. I know they're not going to use it. But I don't want him anyways. All right, so honey, honey, honey. Awesome. I put it here because it was brewed before. And so they fill in, they back fill in all the brood um, with honey, which is what we want. So this is the third. This is the third frame and it's already honey. Awesome. So, Happy Bar Strip already did their job. Work slow and the girls will definitely respect that. This is the fourth frame and now we have brood. Is the queen in here? Let's check. This queen I only seen once. She's, she's a runner. As soon as I pick up the frame, she hides and it's not her just look at the bees they already start scattering too um do we have any eggs i hate yellow i hate white foundation but you know i was given this so i'm not complaining but it's hard for me to see especially because i'm i'm colorblind <laughs> i need to see a good contrast in order to observe properly but uh, it seems like they're doing the same as the brood comes out, they back fill in. But I see this here, they're not doing it yet, so it probably has some eggs on it. I, I just can't see. When you can see, you're not sure. Take a picture and then look later. As here, I have a you can see that I have a sensor here, it is a sensor to check. Um, temperature and humidity because I'm, I'm running some um, test with my own ventilation system checking for the queen not here so she's not laying in this one and I can't see any eggs let's take an image of that to check later I'm not sure if there's any eggs. Definitely no larvae. I haven't seen the first larvae growing anywhere. Okay, so this is the four frame. And I see, ow, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, okay, they got me. Okay, so two got me. And immediately, like I said, as soon as they get you, the other ones will follow. So, Jesus Christ. They move the stingers. I already got to the brood, they got mad. You smoke your hand because you have the pheromone right there. And right now it's time to switch gloves. Because I don't want, I already got one, two, three, four things already. I think that's more than enough that I wanna get today. And this is only the first half. So let's change gloves. Now the other thing is I I'm not liking too much this old plastic ones because it happens to me often that they slip out of my gloves and once I drop it with the queens was there oh, oh Jesus Christ all right look at this beautiful absolutely every single cell is X larvae so I see X on the size, one to three day old larvae on the center, and three to five day old larvae uh, everywhere else. This is a freaking awesome frame. Look at this thing, Jesus Christ, it's beautiful. Let's go for the queen, always in the corner. She likes to go on the corners and immediately turn to the other side. Look at the other side. Holy Jesus Christ, got brood. 
larvae eggs beautiful beautiful my girls beautiful pollen on the sides honey on top this is a beautiful frame beautiful frame so instead of backfilling with the uh, nectar the queen is actually putting eggs immediately as soon as they hatch really beautiful and my queen is not here i don't see her if you see her point her out because man i can find anybody's queen by mine it's ridiculous all right beautiful frame didn't see the queen still gotta be really really careful Quick check for my queen because I know she runs. Nothing. But look at that. Eggs all over. We got eggs. We got larvae. Cabrood. Pollen. My girls are doing an awesome job. Holy Jesus Christ. Look at this thing. Beautiful larvae eggs. Now the other thing is, look at the wings, they're all very shiny and nice. I don't see any problems like the form wind virus or anything like that. I see eggs everywhere. Oh, this is so beautiful! I love this girl. I see eggs, awesome. Okay, so Jesus Christ, more brood. Holy Jesus. Look at that. Holy Jesus Christ, look at this. My beautiful queen. What? Oh my God. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful. I gotta catch this queen and mark her. And make sure that I, I make a split out of this one on spring. I'm loving my girl. The next one is one of the things that I don't like. So tense, it's plastic and it has oil on it. So be very, very careful with this thing. But as you can see, it's doing its job. All right, last two frames. Are you freaking kidding me? Wall to wall brood. And it's, holy Jesus Christ. And it's looking beautiful. Be careful working this um, plastic ones, very slippery. Uh, one of the design flaws of these frames that I noticed right away, and I wasn't even an experienced beekeeper, it is the amount of hiding places that this can have for high beetle. If you see all the way in the corners, there's crevices everywhere where the high beetle can hide. So I know the manufacturer already corrected that. Oh my God. Wall to wall. It's a pretty heavy frame. Resources, nectar. 
nectar, pollen, honey, and honey all over, almost all cap. So this is very awesome, very awesome. Okay, remove all the cross comb that you see. Trying to keep it nice and neat. Brood, 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 brood. And brood on this side. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six frames of brood. Jesus. One do I need to feed them? Even if there is a flow, I'm gonna feed them because they still have a lot of comb to build on the second deep. Perfect. Remember to remove these things. I sometimes forget and it's a mess. That's one. Okay, girls, I know, I know. Okay, what else do we need to do right now? Something that we cannot forget that I usually forget as well. Put back the traps. Now, are the traps okay? This one is, it needs more oil. Clean them up. Other thing with this, which I keep forgetting to bring, is diatomaceous air. I don't know if I pronounce it right, probably didn't. But the E is, instead of using the oil, because if you move this and it goes to the bees, it kills them immediately. So apple cider, vinegar. Oil. Close and good. And be very careful with this stupid pen. I hate these pens, but they're necessary. As you see, on this side, I didn't see any high beetles. which I did see on this side, which didn't have a trap. Always try not to hurt any of the girls. I'm gonna use this here. Girls, I know you're impatient. I know it's taking too long. It's taking me too long. This one is not bad. So I put her in the opposite corner. Be very careful not to tip the oil. You don't want to kill any of this wonderful curls with this beautiful hive. So they're doing awesome. I brought him a gift. So I put banana on top of the brood. They loved it. And there's a study there that it helps breeding brood. So that's good. A little bit of smoke on the sides. Not to have any casualties when we put the, the other bottom. If you can hear that, that's the roar of a queenless hive. Okay. So these girls are doing fantastic. 21 is there. Let's close them up. We don't want that honeybee healthy smell in the air. I'll 
keep moving these girls back to the original position a little bit at a time. So they can find the entrance or rear end a um, few inches at a time until I'm putting back then back to this uh, position as the north wind winds are going to come from that side. Now with when you have this well any kind of top cover and you're using ratchet straps I noticed with this one specifically with this top cover don't tense too much because you create a space here and roaches get in. Jesus Christ, those roaches, they, they don't respect anything. So, you make it a little bit tight so the top cover doesn't fly out. But with a little bit of insulation, it, it presses down on the inner cover and no high beetles or roaches are gonna get in. If you press too tight, it's plastic is going to go like this and they enter on the on the center all right so there it is hope is ready what do we have we have six frames of brood four frames of honey of which these last two still have um, uh, half a frame still to go and they already start on four frames building four frames on the top so for now until the end of November, which is supposedly the end of the flow here in, in Houston, by the second or third week of November, first time, so I'm gonna know if it's true or not. I'm gonna skip this here to see how many more they fill up with uh, nectar and honey. Um, there it is, my hope. Uh, before I did the ratchet strip, I should have done the, the you see, Right here, right here, especially in the front. High beetles can get into that. If it is too open like this one, they will definitely get in there. Okay, here we go again. Before they ratchet the tape. So align the boxes pretty well, as best as you can. Okay, let's clean up and move to the next one. And that's it. So this is what I'm going to do with all nine. Um, I'm going to check the frames. I'm going to count how much resources, how much brood. Um, to calculate and have an idea of how ready they are for winter, how much do I have to feed, or if I'm going to decide to um, merge a couple of ones instead of throwing resources, knowing that they're not gonna make it. So this is the kind of thing that I wanna do and, uh, as a winter preparation assess if the colony is going to make it or not before I throw more money on resources on it. So this is an example of a hive that is doing excellent for winter preparation. Six frames of brood, four frames of honey and building more. The next video is going to be about two hives that are not doing so well and the decisions of what to do with those hives.